Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're in Southwest Washington on Merwin Reservoir for winter kokanee. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. You might think of kokanee as a summertime fish, but the truth is that many lakes offer great wintertime kokanee fishing as well. Merwin Reservoir in southwest Washington is one of them. Today, Joe and Steve Alonchi will have a great dinner. I love cooking them, just uh, brown them, or uh, put uh, flour on them, a um, little olive oil and butter, and then a little garlic. That's it. I do it pretty much the same way, except I use garlic butter, which he's doing it separately and I'm doing it together. It's mid-December and the kokanee or landlocked sockeye salmon are fat and healthy. An advantage of wintertime fishing is that the cooler water temperatures ensure that the meat stays firm. It's important to still keep them on ice, but when properly cleaned and handled, you can expect the best of the best for eating. The day started that morning out of Speleye Boat Launch. It's a beautiful, calm winter day, and we're with guide Cameron Black. So heading out here to Merwin Reservoir. Um, super calm conditions on this winter day. And uh, honestly, the fishing has been good, but sometimes with these really calm days out here, the, these kokanee can throw us for a little bit of a loop, but you know, it's pretty early in the morning. We got a little bit of time. We're gonna start here at the top end of the lake and uh, see if we can find some active fish because that's the key to this time of year with the water temperatures and the air temperatures so hopefully they're going to be biting good. Well, we've had a lot of rain the last couple days and so a lot of people headed up to the lake today. The rivers are blown out, steelhead season's kind of on hold for the moment but I was a little concerned that the top end of the lake sometimes will cloud out and that's like the kryptonite to kokanee fish and if you lose your visibility in your lake these fish do not play but I'm pretty glad to see we're coming out of Spelei here and and uh, everything looks pretty clear. There's a lot of boats fishing around. So like I said, we're gonna start here. Um, one thing I do is I, I break this lake up into like three sections. Like I'll start at the top. If I don't find fish, I'll find a cove or one of the spots in the middle and the dam. And until I've exhausted like all three of those options to find fish, um, you know, we ain't given up yet. So we'll, uh, we'll get the lines in and try right here since we're here. It's a nice day up here. Well guys, let's get them in. So I know Joe's done this a bunch, but Stevie, it's it's one kernel per hook. And today with how calm it is, we are gonna wanna push these lines back. Like let's start at like 150 on those and I'm gonna probably push 220 out the back just because we're just gonna have to see. So these fish will be really spooky. This time of year, they're all on the surface. So you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to spook them off with the boat and not have them have a chance to see your gear. So I'm even going to put a couple on the downriggers just to run them under the surface a little bit. So nothing fancy with uh, hooking our corn up here. I took this corn last night and put a can of tuna and some of the Procure Kokanee corn magic in there. And this time of year, they like little things. So we're going to start with just some little spinning glows. So you got that Brad's Dodger there and it's really moving those wings on that little spinning glow in the corner around and I think that's what we're gonna need to entice some strikes today. Counters reset and start the process of sliding them out. Cameron, hmm. do you ever see jumpers this time of year? We do as they get a little more active. I'm not gonna expect to see any jumpers today. It's December, it's kinda like right in the middle of winter. Um, that's more of a springtime thing it seems like, but not to say that you couldn't see jumpers. And when we do, cast little jigs at them and sometimes pick a couple more up. But I have yet to see jumpers this year. I'm going to 200. <laughs> so the water temp's 48 degrees today, which is 
pretty pretty darn warm. Like we're not worried about kokanee not biting until it gets down into that like 42, 40 degree range. But like I said, we've had a very mild, warm winter so far. So the fish have been getting real big and have been fishing pretty good. We might have to find them though a little bit today. We got some fish down there real deep, but those probably aren't the ones we want. So like this time of year too, like, you know, using your electronics is kind of tough because a lot of these fish will be up on the surface. So when we see fish like that kind of sitting down there at 50 feet, a lot of times it's like schools of pike minnow or fish that, you know, we're not trying to target. Um, seems like the active kokanee will be on the surface. That's a good one. Just give it a release. There you go. That looked like a better bite too. Might be our first kokanee of the day, Joe. Here we go. Be easy, be easy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've caught more coke than I've ever had. <laughs> no, that's a good coke. That'll work. Yeah, so Stevie, if you see the downrigger doing that, I set them to where I want to I want to um, release the downrigger, not the fish. Oh, get in the net. There we go. That's a good one, bud. Welcome back to Merwin Reservoir in southwest Washington. I'm Justin Wolf. In the cool wintertime conditions, scaling down the size of your lures can be important. So this is a pretty little average guy this time of year. They do have a size class that's much bigger that will be touching 13, 14 inches. He's probably about 11, but biting the little chrome spinning glow with the little red tips. Like I said earlier, this time of year, the fish definitely, um, they're not as aggressive, I feel. They some days um, will really shy to the bigger lures. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of small stuff that we'll use too, little small hoochies and stuff, but been running little spinning glows. They got good action for the, uh, they got good action for their, uh, their wings spinning around there and getting jerked around by the Dodgers. So, all right, well, you got dinner anyways. <laughs> so most of these kokanee in here um, get hatchery planted, hatchery supplementation from the hydropower project that's they do about 100,000 a year. But there's also like natural production that goes up in some, when they close the gates basically to the hatchery, they don't allow them in anymore, they don't need anymore. They spawn in some of the localized creeks around here as well. But another thing about this lake is that they actually get some recruitment from the reservoir above, which is Yale, and there is no hatchery production out of that lake. And that lake's got more kokanee than, than anywhere else. And the problem is there's too many of them in there and they're kind of a little smaller than the ones in this lake, but on years that we get, on years that we get, you know, a heavy, uh, heavy spring runoff, some of those fish will actually recruit into this lake too. So you've got like three different entities pumping kokanee into this lake. Oh, if we were pike minnow fishing, we'd be in hog heaven right now. There's a big old school of them about 35 feet to 55 feet. But those are generally, if I drop my down your balls right now, I'd hook a few of those guys. A lot of people will see those marks and think that they'll be dropping their down rigger balls at 55 feet and getting kokanee this time of year. And I'm not saying it can't happen, but odds are pretty small. Oh, oh, Stevie, Stevie, come back, grab that one. So just grab the down rigger out and just give it a little jerk and it should pop loose. One more time, one more time. Okay, hold on a sec, let me see the line. There you go, okay. I got them a little set hard. I'll, uh, I'll fix them up. Nice and easy. So, so even though they should be on the surface, they're biting on the downrigger ones, which probably just tell me they're being real shy. So just take your time and hopefully some other ones will hook up. All right, Stevie, I'll fix that downrigger clip, but I usually like to make the fish not be able to release the downrigger, just us, because or else you get, I mean, kokanee come in little packs and they'll nip and they'll nip and they'll nip. And if you have your downrigger set real loose, you're, you're not gonna get the hook set into him. He's still there. And, uh, and then you're gonna get false trips and you're gonna be resetting your downrigger all day versus catching fish. Keep coming, keep coming. Give me a little lift there. That's a nice one. There we go. Go ahead and pull back. Give me some line out. There you go. Yeah. So that one there, a little different colored spin and glow. Get out of there, there we go. Perfect hook, look at that, you hooked him just right. Just He's like that. Beautiful. He's beautiful when you bread him and put him in the pan of oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
There you go, I'll let you rebait it. And if you want to put it out at 100 right there for that downer girl, we'll get it back out. See how the blade is skiing on the top? That's uh -huh. when they're playing possum. So the only time, you, when you lose a fish, your blade will come back spinning. So when you see it like that, that's your time to just keep steady pressure and keep reeling, because like I said, he's gassed out for a little bit. And usually you can kind of bring him right to the net if I'm ready. So just give me a quick little lift. Oh, there we go. Tried to get away. Purple again. Oh, got the rod pinned, oh my goodness. Oh, did I lose him? I think I might have lost him. I lost him, I should quit. Oh, but you guys can grab that one right there. I lose one, but Joe will land his. I'm gonna leave, put this, leave this out for a minute. So Stevie gets yours, you can have this one. I got a mouthful of, I, I know. mouthful I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, get this, I'll get this out. When they start biting like this, you gotta keep getting rods out, Joe. Just do whatever we can, get, get lines. Oh, we got another fish on right there. So we've been trolling for a few, about 20 minutes. We didn't find anything. All of a sudden we found the school and you gotta make sure you keep feeding them. Okay, uh, you, guys, you guys are gonna be a while. They're out there really far. So every rod right there got bit, every single one. Had a little school. Yep, of course I lost mine, but par for the course. I won't say anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, don't do that fish, don't do that. Ready? Yeah, I'm good now, bud. So that's fat coat, can you get too? Oh, I can't see him. Oh my goodness. Can't see him. Can't see him there, bud. Guy, give me a lift. Oh my gosh. Joe! Sorry. <laughs> no wonder you don't, want to, you don't want to get him. You're pulling him away every time I go to net him. There you go, Stevie. He's right there. Yep, give me a nice, slow, steady lift. And then, oh, look at that. We can net a fish. Nice job. Get him on the net. Perfect. A little spinning glue action, baby. Little presentations. All right. Drop the fish in the bottom boat, put some corn on it, and get it right back out to them. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's episode from Merwin Reservoir, where we're catching kokanee in the dead of winter. Now, for most people, corn is a vital part of a kokanee lure. Now, before we go back to Merwin Reservoir to catch some more fish, here's Steve Lynch from Procure with a demonstration on how to prepare some very effective kokanee corn. Today I'm going to show you how to cure up your corn for fishing for kokanee. And it's pretty simple. All you need is a can of shoe peg corn. Not, doesn't matter what brand it is, but open the can of shoe peg corn. You're going to drain off your excess juice. And what that does, that allows your corn to absorb our chemicals and the other fish oils that you'll add into it. So all you do is I take the can after I drain the juice off, and I'll put it into two containers. Half I'm gonna leave natural color, half I'm gonna leave the pink. And, and that's with the Wizard Kokanee Killer Magic. This will take the slime off the corn and firm it up. And this does the same and dyes it pink. So one day or one minute for the kokanee, they like the yellow color, the next time they like the pink color. So it's, it's pretty quick and easy. All we're gonna do is once we've drained the juice, Pour some corn into a, a Tupperware container. Preferably, you want an airtight container. So that way, at the end of the day, when you're fishing, you can put them back in the refrigerator. All this stuff is, 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 you can use it pretty sparingly on both the pink and the natural. It does not take a lot to firm it up. Pretty much about three times heavier than table salt. And I just sprinkle it in stir it around, and then maybe give it another quick dose. But start to finish on this, it will be less than three minutes. So it's not a big ordeal. It's not something you have to do, you know, five days in advance. Uh, although I recommend doing this the day before you're gonna kokanee fish because this will rejuice up. Whether you're doing the pink or the natural, your corn the next morning will re be, have a lot of juice in the bottom of the container. I recommend draining that juice off and then you can add different oils to it. So what I would do is take this container on the second morning after I've drained the juice off and split it up four different ways. One I'll leave just plain, but then the other three I'll add different oils to them. 
And so that way I can take the same bait and make it fish four different ways. Okay, so the most important thing is keeping your baits cool. On a hot summer day, even when you're firming your baits up and curing them with the wizard coating corn magic, they're going to get soft and slime up on you. But ideally, if you keep your baits in a cooler or with an ice pack underneath them, they'll last you three, four weeks, no problem. Uh, but here again, corn's not that expensive. This didn't take that long. So if you want to just make it and throw it away at the end of the day and not care, that's up to you. But time's important to me. So I, I believe in trying to take care of the baits, keeping them cool, and they'll last, like I said, for a couple of weeks, no problem. Okay, so there's several ways to tweak your corn. You know, this was just a basic, right, with no scent added. And as you can see, they're already juicing up. But things have blown up. You can, be, you can add tuna powder or krill powder to your corn. You can take and do the powder dyes. And we've got this in six different uh, flavors or, or colors. You can do the liquid dyes, which is instant. Uh, Ideally, if you're, if you're going to be scenting your baits, you want to use an oil or a water-soluble product. So the bait oils from here through the water-solubles, those will go directly on the corn. Our super sauce and the gels, those go on your lures. So any of your lures or your, and or your flashers, you want to be using the gel products. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you know, we have a hand and lure soap where you can clean your hands as well as your lures. Welcome back to Merwin Reservoir. I'm Justin Wolf. We found a few schools of fish and are putting some good numbers in the boat. So we trolled outside the bay and we just landed on a good little school. And I, I, it's really hard to track like individual schools in this lake because they the whole fish are move all the fish are moving around. But I'll probably try to take another swing back through this area if I don't find them again. In the winter time, they seem to school up a lot more dense than they do in the summer and the spring, where they're just kind of broadcasted out everywhere. So you got to sometimes pay attention to that. This one, this was the one I lost. He stole my bait completely. I think we got nipped right there, but might be going a little. Oh, I'm going a little fast. Jeez, got going a little fast there. Speed is extremely critical in these winter kokanee fisheries. You gotta have like the right presentation size, the right speed, and then the right corn scent like to get numbers. And I was going a little bit fast there. One, two, one, three at most. Summertime trolling, you know, we can kick up to like one, four, one, six and still be productive, but I don't know what it is. These, these guys can be real finicky right now. Oh, there we go, Stevie, right behind me. Joe, somebody, somebody, anybody. <laughs> I saw just, oh, oh geez, I got that in there wrong. Oh, he's, oh, there you go, good job. I gotta remember to back that one down. That was way too in there, they're a little tight. I think he just got off. I think he just got off too, yep. You're... So the release that I'm using here is really adjustable and I had it just cranked down a little too much, but I do like these pro releases because I use the same ones for salmon or for kokanee. And all you got to do is start from the back, make a few wraps, lock it in. And now next time, Stevie, you go to release that, it should pop a lot easier. But I like to fine tune them, just like I said, so the fish doesn't pop them, so I actually pop them. So this is a guy that's called a pro release, and I've been using them for about a year now. And I do like them because I can adjust them just to where I can use them for salmon or for my kokanee. And so I get real familiar with how these things operate. And what, how tight I need to have this thing to make it release for whatever species I'm fishing. Um, but like I said, that one there was a little bit too tight, so all you gotta do is back down this little screw. And like I said, you'll get used to knowing how much tension you need to put on that to release it to where I can release it, but the kokanee can't. Oh, he's still hammering on it. You get a little pop there. There you go. Nice. I'll leave this one for you. Classic kokanee, try to play the color game with them because we've been gotten a, getting a few bites on that purple one. So I had another one of those purple with pink wings. We put it out, of course the chrome ones are getting bit again now. That's how we land a kokanee. <laughs> you can get the That's how we like them, just like that. Wrapped up and double pinned. Little chrome red spinning glow right there. Just, he was, that one you probably couldn't have lost if you tried. Hot, hot. Hot, hot. It's a good one. 
little Brad's Dodger and purple spinning glow seems to be a combo right now. Come on, buddy. There it is. <laughs> oh, he came back and bit. Oh, yeah. getting everyone hot cocoa and coffee and we're getting fish. <laughs> that worked, didn't it? Yeah. Oh boy, that's a good one. There's a now. There, there's okay. I was just complaining about some of the bigger ones not biting, and that's all it took. Come on, pop loose. Oh, a little bigger kokanee there. Probably in the probably touching 13 or so. I think there's a couple of different like size classes, and I bet it's depending on if it was born naturally or if it was planted or came from Yale or. All right, net is ready. <laughs> Hey, they're nice and tired by the time they get to the boat and then they don't fight and pop yeah, off. They're, they're so tired. They're exactly. Dead. That's exactly <laughs> the plan. Joe! Ah, I missed that one. That was all me. We got another fish on somewhere. It was jumping like crazy. Jumping off. Going crazy. <laughs> tail walking. He's tail walking. Right. We got two. Oh, we got three on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark that spot. Oh yeah. There's mine clear out there. Oh wait, mine's actually a stick. Never mind. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna catch today. Okay. Stevie, yours popped off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet people are watching the back of this boat. There's all this stuff splashing around. We got one fish on and a stick. I'm trying to keep them away from you. Is it under? Oh, it's underneath you now. It's okay. Oh, that's the hardest fight in Kokanee. I have a caught right there. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Coming in. Oh, you right there. Yo. <laughs> well, so much for that. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.